seriously, this is a hot potato, particularly in the UK. A lot of players with mental health issues, when they finish, they have that cliff top drama, no longer involved in football from a playing capacity. Honestly, what has it been like for you? It's a tough one. It's it's scary. As, as soon as uh, a player turns 30, time just speeds up. And uh, all of a sudden, your body's not invincible. Uh, unless you're right at the top of the game where, you, where you're really set financially or you're in a good place with your domestic club team, you, you begin starting chasing contracts. I, you know, I was lucky to have three great years at Toronto FC and due to an injury and salary cap reasons, all of a sudden I'm let go. I've got an injury and at 30, it, it was tough. And, uh, you know, I, that led me to Oldham via Turkey and Germany. Then China had a short spell at Shenzhen Ruby and then up to Inverness played for Ross County. And then, uh, it was funny, Mark, I failed a medical at Kilmarnock and nobody fails a medical in Scotland. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Sorry, I'm not laughing, mate. I'm not laughing. <laughs> and, uh, and then finally, you know what the writing's, on the wall and and then it's what's next and i prepared myself a little bit i had some of my uefa coaching courses and badges and i always knew i'd get into the coaching world but it's it's pretty daunting and uh the phone stops to ring a little bit you have to be in my experience a little bit proactive and uh i, I did a little bit of a self-assessment and and sort of looked at back at my career and, and where where i really enjoyed my time as well and where maybe i could add value and everything led back to toronto and uh th there's a another former player he, he actually coaches in the academy now as well danny dicchio and i don't know if you know that name yeah i do he used to play for uh, sunderland obviously Fam famously if you want to wind him up tomorrow mickey gray tells the story back in 1998 penalty shootout to reach the top flight and I think Mickey turned round to see Danny, a striker, had taken his boots off and Mickey thought, oh, I'm the left back, I'm going to have to take one and Mickey Gray missed the penalty that would have taken Sunderland into the top flight. So you might want to remind Danny of that tomorrow. I'm on it. I'm on, I'm on WhatsApp as soon as we're done. Uh, yeah, that's brilliant. I, I always like Mickey Gray, good player. Yeah. So yeah, I, I kind of set my sights on on following Danny Dicchio's pathway. He was coaching at, at Toronto FC's academy, a former player as well of Toronto FC, scored TFC's first ever goal. But he was also on TV for for there's there's two sort of Sky Sports uh, here in Canada. There's there's TSN and also Sportsnet, a little bit like BT Sports and Sky Sports. And uh, I thought maybe I could add value with my experiences as a player, maybe as a pundit as well. So I, uh, I I reached out to TSN. They said, yeah, we've got a ton of content. Come over and we'll go from there. So I come over and uh, have a meeting. It goes well. They had tons of, of talent in place. Uh, I had to be patient and would come in when, when shows were on and almost like an old school apprentice plumber would just watch the guys work. I'd sit back, I'd take notes. The producer started to see my character and commitment. To, to potentially my new craft, but I thought, you know what, Mark, I, I need to get reps in. And uh, I'd actually read that Gary Neville was working for MUTV calling uh, Man United Reserve games. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to reach out to TFC and, and see if they need some help calling their TFC2 games. They play in the USL League over here, and uh, they were happy to bring me on board. So I was the journey now had started. I started to get a little bit of traction, and then – uh, one day, maybe eight months later, it was the perfect storm for me. Uh, talent was caught in weather in Philadelphia. Somebody was sick, and all of a sudden, the producer said, you know what, Terry, you're in. Here's your chance. And because I spent time learning and, and watching the guys work, but also uh, learning the craft by calling TFC2 games, that when the chance came, I was ready. I, I you know, put on my, I tried to fit into one of my suits when I played and, <laughs> uh, and uh, I was a solid six out of 10, but what the six out of 10 was, is I was reliable and the producer, 
uh, said, you know what, Terry, next time there's an opportunity you're in. And I was now the guy hanging around the hoop. That led to a couple times a month to a couple times a week. And for the last four or five years, I've been a regular on our Sky Sports. So, so that was cool. So I, I kind of ticked that box of, of Danny Dicchio of, of this TV side. But my real passion was, uh, was, 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 I thought was coaching. And this is where I could really add value. And I'd be up at the training ground and I'd, I'd be doing the, the media side of things a little bit. But I kept looking over at that field. And it, it's tough when you come back as a former player because not everyone's sure of your intentions and, and, and what your character's like. And, and are you a team player? And uh, through kind of the process of, of, of kind of coming to the training ground a ton and, and seeing our staff uh, at our stadium during game times, they started to see that, you know, Terry's, Terry's an all right guy. And uh, so I, I, I spoke with Danny and asked him, I said, hey, man, can I shadow your, your academy session? So I, again, similar to the TV route, started to shadow him for six months. Uh, the under 14 job came up. Uh, I fortunately got that uh, on a part-time basis. And then after the season, kind of now I'm combining TV, academy coaching, and, uh, you know, I couldn't be happier. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really fortunate um, for the opportunity that MLSC have given me. But, Mark, kind of looking at my career, it was so up and down. And, one of the things for, for a number of reasons, I, I didn't have a ton of stability. And uh, when I when I finished playing, I had a little bit of more time to understand Terry. And I made sure that once I kind of achieved something that I was gonna reset my goals. And this is where the coaching for me just went to a whole nother level. As soon as I got that opportunity and I was now achieved that goal, I was like, right, you know what? How do I become the best academy coach in the world? And, and this is where uh, my coaching career just went on steroids. I, I went back to Manchester City, studied them for a couple of weeks, went down to River Plate to learn from the best in player development, went over to our rivals, LAFC, PSV, went cross sports and spent two years just recently hanging out of the back pocket of, of Nick Nurse and the Raptors. That's been so cool. Uh, I've been man marking Chris Schufeld in the business department. I'm a pain in his ass and, and it's... <laughs> It's been so rewarding, uh, really kind of pushing the boat and, and trying to be the best coach in the world. But do you now define yourself, because this could be a, can be a critical distinction, as a former player, or do you define yourself by the roles that you are currently doing? Are you a pundit and academy coach, or are you a former player? Yeah, that's, that's a great point. And uh, I think maybe three years ago, I, I, I changed that mindset. And uh, I also changed my mindset too to, you know what, I, I think every former player says, you know what, I want to be Pep Guardiola. I want to be our head coach here, Greg Vanny. And uh, I also changed my goal to, you know, I just want to help Toronto FC and help Canadian soccer and, and be the, the best under 14 coach I can be. And uh, that, was, that was a really liberating and cool feeling. And all of a sudden, almost naturally, you've got this great network around you.